We'll start with our next theme, which is social security scheme. Okay, now we would have, uh, as you would have read the newspaper or PIB, too many Bhima Yojana keep coming in news. Yes, so everything looks like an insurance scheme. So we have to just know the main difference between these schemes. So most uh, social security schemes can be broadly classified into either insurance related scheme or pension related schemes. And there's just one special scheme for the girl child, which we will see as Sukanya Samriddhi Yojana. We'll first start with insurance. Now insurance, there are three kind of insurance which uh, we have classified for our understanding or for memorizing the schemes. One is accident related death or disability. For example, somebody is working in a factory and suddenly uh, he cuts his hand or he loses his leg while working with a machine. So that's an accident related death or disability scheme. On there's another one which is life insurance which is applicable for all of us. The third one is health insurance. Now coming to the first scheme on accident related death or disability, we have Pradhan Mantri Suraksha Bhima Yojana. So in your notes, in the objectives, you will see minimal annual premium for death or disability due to accident. So anybody who falls within 80 to 70 can avail the scheme. So any individual, if he wants to take an insurance against accident related death or disability, then he will subscribe for Pradhan Mantri Suraksha Bhima Yojana. Okay. Next, it comes from Ministry of Finance. Now most of the social security schemes will come from the Ministry of Finance only. So that is for broader understanding. Next we have for life insurance, Pradhan Mantri Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana. So if you see Pradhan Mantri is Prime Minister, that is similar. Bhima Yojana is insurance. There you have Suraksha Bhima Yojana, which is accident related death. Here you have Jeevan Jyoti. So the moment it's Jeevan, you can relate Jeevan in Hindi means life. So it's a life insurance scheme. The earlier scheme was applicable for everybody between 18 to 70 years. But look at the beneficiary here. It's 18 to 50 years only can enroll for life insurance scheme. And that makes sense also. After 50 years, if somebody is going for life insurance, you might rather want to say 50 years. Today, if you say 50 years, if you stay healthy, that's good enough. All right. So the government also is telling 18 to 50 years, if you have lived good enough, after that, don't come to me for the scheme, okay? We are also happy if you go. So, no, that's not, that's not what it means, but this is just for you to remember in the exam, all right? Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana is only up to 50 years, whereas accident related death is up to 80 years, 70 years, sorry, 70 years. Now, what is the purpose? Again, here, same thing, it is just social inclusion and giving social security uh, benefits to everybody. Okay, again coming under Ministry of Finance. Then we have health insurance, so which is Rashtriya Swast Bhima Yojana. This is to reduce out of pocket expenditure in health and increase access to health care. All right, in your purpose, those are the keywords there. To reduce the out of pocket expenditure and uh, on health and increase access to health care. To provide financial protection against cat catastrophic health cost by reducing the out of pocket expenditure. All right. The main keyword for Rashtri Swasta Bhima Yojana or what is the speciality is, look at the significance first point cashless health insurance coverage okay what does that mean in case you have some health issue you may go 
seek treatment at a government hospital or at a private hospital. So generally for the poor person, once you have to go for treatment, the, the first issue they have is how do I pay so much of hospitalization cost. Rashtriya Swastha Bhima Yojana says that you don't have to pay any cash at that time. Avail the scheme up to a certain point, you will get cashless insurance. All right. So generally, when you claim mediclaim, what happens is, let's say I'm admitted in the hospital, and uh, let's say we have paid two lakhs for my recovery. Only after that we submit for mediclaim, and that amount is reimbursed. But at least one time I have to pay two lakhs. Now we are somebody, the middle class is somebody who can at least afford. But for the lower, uh, the lower class or the BPL families, they might not be able to even afford that one-time expenditure. For those people, the government has launched Rashtriya Swastha Bhima Yojana. That's why if you look into the beneficiary, it is any BPL family. Yes, underline that. Because the government understands that the BPL family will not be able to even meet the hospitalization cost at the first instance. So that's why they are giving them a cashless health insurance card. Up to a certain limit, you can avail cashless health insurance. Is this clear? So that your keywords will be reduce out of pocket expenditure on health. Then you will come to any BPL family that's the beneficiary. At the end in significance, it's a cashless health coverage and that is the speciality. Clear? All right. Then, uh, does this apply for only public hospitals or private hospitals? Both. So I said you can be admitted anywhere. So this, gift, this scheme gives freedom of choice to the individual. Because what we have seen is, today if you go to the GH, for certain diseases you might not get really good treatment there. So even to a BPL family, the government is giving freedom of choice to choose between public and private hospital. So that's another keyword. In the second paragraph, in the last features, you will have freedom of choice between public and private hospital. Okay, that's a salient feature of the scheme which you will have to remember. Also, portability, a beneficiary who has been enrolled in a particular district can also use the scheme across India. Okay, so I might be coming from let's say a rural place in Tamil Nadu but for my treatment I want to access a, a, a very good hospital let's say in Mumbai. I will still be able to take benefit of this scheme. So portability is another salient feature of the scheme. Clear? They give you a cashless health insurance of about 30,000 per annum on family basis. That amount is not required. Rashtriya Swastha Bhima Yojana is for health insurance. The speciality of the scheme is it reduces your out of pocket expenditure at the first instance itself. How? By giving you a cashless health insurance. So obviously government cannot extend such facility to every citizen of the country. It can only be for the BPL families. Clear? These are the three broad health insurance schemes. Okay? Health insurance, any insurance scheme, government will not go into detail asking how much subscription you have to pay, when do you get the subscription. So if you know this, it's enough. If it's accident related, death or disability, it's Pradhan Mantri, Suraksha Bhima Yojana. If it's life insurance, then it's Pradhan Mantri, Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana. If it's health insurance, then it's about Rashtriya Swast Bhima Yojana and that's only for the BPL population. The pension schemes of the government, there is one pension scheme government has launched especially for the unorganized sector and one for the old people. Yes, so for the unorganized sector, we would have heard of Atal Pension Yojana frequently in news. So we know that most of the workforce of the country today is outside the organized sector. That means they are not there on the payroll. If a particular employee is on the payroll of an organization, that organization itself will give them certain benefits after you retire. Let's say for example, if I'm an IS officer, I'm on the payroll of Government of India. After I retire, I get certain pension from the government, from my employer. So my employer gives benefits to me only if I am 
an organized sector employee but for an unorganized sector employer employee employer does not give any kind of social clear so government has launched the scheme called atal pension yojana clear so in your notes look at the objective that's your key focus to address the longevity risk among workers in the unorganized sector and to encourage workers in the unorganized sector to voluntarily save for their retirement so here they are asking the unorganized sector employees to enroll with them pay a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription when they are earning and at the end the government will give them a return all right so voluntarily they are encouraging these unorganized sector employees to save for their retirement all these are keywords okay in the objective i am reading the objective of atal pension yojana that's the main focus encourage workers in the unorganized sector to voluntarily save for their retirement okay uh, it was already there in the existing government in the name of swavlambam is there any difference no it was just that the government did not focus much okay so that every government says so they are just trying to increase coverage there is no other speciality this is atal pension yojana this is for all unorganized sector now for old people specially the government has launched the scheme called pradhan mantri vaya vandana yojana which is in current affairs this year all right pradhan mantri vaya vandana yojana is in current affairs this year this says old people are getting pension but there's always a risk that the interest rates might fall when compared to the market interest rate so they should not be eventually standing to lose so to protect them against an interest fall when they get when they are all save so much for their retirement that scheme is nothing but pradhan mantri vaya vandana yojana all right the beneficiary are old people and uh, the purpose is the main uh focus here okay for this scheme what is given in the purpose provide social security during old age and to protect elderly persons age 60 and above against a future fall in their interest income due to uncertain market condition all right beneficiary are people who are 60 years and above it is to protect old people against a further fall in the interest rate due to uncertain market conditions clear these are the key words for the scheme which you have to remember pradhan mantri vaya vandana yojana clear these are broadly the social security schemes which are in news for last one year some of them have in fact have been launched previously but they keep coming now and then apart from that there is a scheme called sukanya samriddhi yojana which actually but i'm just trying to put here so that we remember we see old people then we see insurance we see pension we see unorganized sector so what is there for the girl child so girl child generally even forget the scheme what happens the moment a girl child is born in the family mother starts saving for her wedding every time she has some money she starts buying little little gold so that finally when she is to marry she can give her some 500 grams of gold and if they are rich they might give 1 kilo 2 kilo of gold when they and even more okay just depends yes or no your mother starts planning the moment you are born they start planning for your wedding the same thing the government wants people to plan for the education of the girl child all right so under this law, initiative called beti bachao beti padhao andolan which was to support girl the education the government came up with this scheme called sukanya samriddhi yojana to meet the requirement of higher education expense of the girl child higher education no maybe few of them if i have to honestly say my parents were only saving for my wedding until i got married all right so it was only that then i had to tell i want to do upsc and i had to take some money come here to attend coaching and write upsc all right so pradha uh, sukanya samriddhi yojana the main purpose look at that that's the main focus 
to meet the requirement of higher education expense of the girl child. Yes, what do they basically do? This scheme is, what do you think? This scheme will only be for APL or BPL? BPL only or APL? Everywhere, rich or poor, the status of girl child in the country is same. So for anybody who has a girl child, you can open an account in the bank, deposit money, that money will earn 9.5% interest, more than every government bank, and that income is tax free, okay? So whether you want to save for your girl child or not, even if you have excess money and you have a girl child, you can start depositing in this bank account, all right? No, I'm not joking, honestly, okay? You have a girl child and I think maximum you can deposit only 1 lakh rupees and it starts with minimum of 1000 rupees. So every year you can pay the fixed amount into the bank account, all right? So look into the objective to motivate parents to open an account in the name of the girl child. That's the specialty. So if you have a girl child, the account will not be in your name, it will be in her name. For her welfare and to deposit a maximum of their savings up to the prescribed limits. For girls below 10 years, you can start this scheme. Otherwise, our people are very intelligent. Even now, they think they can save some money, everybody will start pushing in money. So up to 10 years, you can open an account, you can start saving for their higher education. This comes under Ministry of Child and Women Development and also Ministry of Finance. Most of the schemes here come under Ministry of Finance because they have to do with money, uh, banks, and then giving them a interest later. Clear? So these are the different social security schemes of the government. Can we move ahead? Now we move ahead to a very important topic. Important topic that is education. To be very honest, in education, we have two stories to see. One, what happens the moment a child is born, primary education, secondary education, higher education, we will see the schemes. The government is running these schemes for last 20, 30, 40 years, okay? UPSC so far says I am not interested in this, okay? This is what I am talking from last 4 or 5 years experience. They have not really asked the question on Sarva Siksha Abhyan or Ashtriya Madhyamik Shiksha Abhyan, Uchchatar Shiksha Abhyan, no. They are only interested in asking questions on the recent initiatives under each of these. Okay, for example, if you look at previous year question, there was a question on uh, Rashtriya Unnat Abhyan or Pade Bharat, Bade Bharat. Okay, so these new taglines keep coming from Modi government every now and then. Where does this appear? This appears in PIB. Okay, sometimes Hindu also covers them. Government, uh, UPSC is interested only in those initiatives. But we will understand the overall architecture of education sector in India and then look at recent initiatives, okay? Because we should know what government is doing and then when an initiative comes, you should know under which part does that initiative fall. Clear? So the moment a child is born or rather you think of your own education, you were admitted in LKG, LKG to 8th standard was your primary school, elementary education. So what is the name of the scheme of the government for elementary schooling? Sarva Shiksha Abhyan. Yes? Okay, so that says free schooling from zero, a, up to 8th standard. Alright, just look into your notes. We will quickly tell you the keywords so that we can finish this. It was launched for universalization of elementary education in India. What did that mean? The government wanted to ensure that no matter what, every child in India completes at least 8th standard. Alright? So for universalization of uh, elementary education, Sarva Siksha Abhiyan was launched. It was the main, uh, in fact, you would have heard of right to education. Yes, right to education also was um, nothing but free and compulsory education for everybody up to 8th standard. So to implement that, Sarva Siksha Abhyan was there. Children of 6 to 14 years age were the beneficiaries. Now the recent initiative under Sarva Siksha Abhyan, which or the tagline which government has launched is Pade Bharat, Bade Bharat, which means if 
India reads, India will grow. All right. This initiative is under the Sarva Siksha Abhiyan, targeting elementary education, six to fourteen years of age. So we will remember this scheme, Bade Bharat, Bade Bharat, under primary education. Now. When you say universalization, you have to think getting every child into school is not very easy because not everybody is motivated to study. Even all of us, few of us only were motivated to study. Most of us were pushed to school. Most of us had to go because we had friends in school that was better than listening to mom scolding at home. Okay, but for the rural areas, the main motivation for drawing them to school was food. Because if they were at home, they had to stay hungry. So that's why midday meal scheme was launched. See how people, uh, how government attracted. They knew that if free food is given, people will come. Even today, I think for us, for people who are staying in hostel, if free food is given at some seminar, we still prefer to go to the seminar because food is being valued so much. Midday meal scheme. It was provision of lunch. Look at the purpose. Lunch free of cost to children on all working days. Okay, it was targeting two things: one, to encourage children to come to school; and number two, to ensure that children have at least basic level of nutrition, because that also was the focus of the government only. Protecting children from classroom hunger, increasing enrollment and attendance. Why? Because we know if we give food, children will turn up for school. Improved socialization because they thought if you make all children sit together, serve them the same food in rural areas, there's a, a very strong class divide between the different caste. A person from the higher caste will not eat with the person with the lower caste. Somebody cooks from the lower caste, person from the higher caste will not eat. Yes. So to promote all of these objectives, these are the different objectives of midday meal scheme. Main objective: attract children into school. Side objectives: ensure there is increasing attendance, ensure nutrition is better, ensure social uh, social unity takes place across different castes. Okay, these are different objectives which you should be aware of. Move to the next one. Next, I've completed eighth standard. After that, can you force somebody? No, government said I will force up to eighth standard because that much funds only I have. After that, we leave. So we had Rashtriya Madhyamik Shiksha Abhiyan, which was to focus on secondary school infrastructure. Rashtriya Madhyamik Shiksha Abhiyan, which was on secondary education, to ensure that there is good quality of secondary education, and there was a lot of focus on science and mathematics given at this level. All right. In fact. Um, there are different schemes of the government focusing on science and mathematics. That is important for the prelims. Let's go ahead and look. Science, language, yes, look at this. Pade Bharat and Bade Bharat, yes, we were seeing it is under Sarva Siksha Abhiyan. The speciality is there was special focus on language development and maths. You need to know this. You may not just say Pade Bharat, Bade Bharat is for develop for education development. That is okay, but special focus was on language development and maths. Whereas there's something called Rashtriya Avishkar Abhiyan, which is to specially focus on interest in science in from the first to twelfth standard. Okay, so when we see Rashtriya Madhyamik Shiksha Abhiyan, I said government now wants to focus that students at least learn science and maths properly. Because geography, history, I think other than UPSC, we don't study again. Yes, never in your engineering you would have studied. Neither did I, when I do my BCom, I studied geography or history. All right. So science and maths are the major focus of the government. This is Rashtriya Avishkar Abhiyan. For those who know in Hindi, Avishkar means discovery. Okay. So this is special focus on science. Okay. So that way, let me finish this and come to recent initiatives because there I need to tell you the keywords in the notes as well. Now, once your schooling is over, what happens? You have to go to college. So there should be some scheme of the government to focus on higher education, and that is nothing but Rashtriya Uchchhatar Shiksha Abhiyan. Look at the purpose. 
the scheme took care of funding of large number of institutions, state institutions. So there are a lot of government colleges which are being run. Rashtri Uchitar uh, Shiksha Abhiyan takes care of funding of government run colleges. In fact, today if you see in the country, government run colleges are doing much better than private colleges. Yes or no? Is that the case with schools? No. no. But if you look IITs, IIMs, I think even here Anna University, all these are government run or government funded colleges and they are doing quite better when compared to the private colleges. Okay, so look at the objective, establish higher education in unserved and underserved areas. What does that mean? Today we have colleges only in the major cities. So why not have them in small rural places or small towns so that people there can also start going for colleges. That's the first objective which you will have to remember. And the next is integrate skill development with higher education. This was integrated only now because when everywhere after you are focusing on skill development, it's better you teach them a skill while they are in college itself. So that is the second objective of Rashtriya Uchitar Siksha Abhyan. Yes, Madhyamik is middle, so that's 9 to 12. Uchitar is higher education, okay. Now after that, whom do you have to train? Teachers have to be trained. One of the main reasons whenever I think uh, the president of India is talking at any higher education institution, he will say quality of education in India is not too great because of two reasons, either lack of teachers or lack of quality teachers. So there has to be an institute to promote teacher training and we have national mission on teacher and training to focus at the gap between teacher the course which is uh, the industry related gap, alright. So the teacher would have studied some 20 years back. Now she has to teach, industry would have changed. But in, even in our uh, labs we will have the same old apparatus. Today everything happens with the help of computers. So to update the teachers a national mission on teacher and training was launched, alright. All these are old programs. This is just for you to get the umbrella structure. Under all these schemes new initiatives have been launched which will be the focus in the next slide, okay. So just get this overall idea. Ensure a coordinated approach so as to holistically address the various shortcomings related to teachers across educational spectrum from school to higher education, alright. What you will remember, teacher training mission will focus on school teachers, technical education and higher education. So the key word there is the last line. School teachers, higher education, including technical education in the objective, okay, it includes all of them. We will next look at, uh, here, okay, uh, we have completed teacher training, then we have adult education. What does adult education include? Yes, PG. What if my ma what if your mother wants to sudden suddenly she has an interest for learning now? What if your grandmother wants to learn something? Obviously she will not fit here. She will not fit in school, she will not fit in colleges. There has to be some social circle there. So adult education if you generally see in villages, it's an informal way. So in the evenings after all the work is over, they sit together. There are volunteers who, who tell them about let's say basic health practices, basic let's say if we have something like financial inclusion, new scheme has come, what are the benefits of the scheme, how do you avail the scheme. So education and through an informal manner. Is that necessary? Yes. If government is launching so many schemes with so many similar names, that too in Hindi, in a country where we have so many languages. You need your people to be educated, yes, you can't have scheme running for pages and people don't even understand. Adult education is very important for the development of the nation because we already know our literacy is very poor. So that's why we have the scheme Sakshar Bharat which is focused on, look at the purpose, promotion of literacy in rural area and they'll first pick up those where 
female literacy is low okay adult education mostly focusing on ladies so here promotion of literacy in rural areas majority of them are women you will see there at the end in the significance all right so adult education is nothing but an informal way of educating the rural women so that they are at least aware of the basic requirements of day to day life yes towards a more literate india moving next we have a special scheme for girl education so that was launched i think few years back with narendra modi having uh, i think madhuri dikshit by his side he had by beti bachao beti padhao andolan why so he said save the girl child educate the girl child and that will do wonders for economy and your society all right so we have beti bachao beti padhao initiative it was to address declining child sex ratio and also empowerment of women these are the two objectives beti bachao means if you are carrying a girl child don't abort it so child sex ratio will automatically improve if you have given birth to the girl child ensure she is educated so that she becomes empowered all right two objectives bringing down child sex uh, sorry increasing the child sex ratio and empowering the girl child these were the objectives of beti bachao beti padhao andolan is this clear can we move ahead this is the overall objective now we will go ahead and see what's very important for us okay so first we saw पढ़े भारत पढ़े भारत विच कम्स अंडर विच स्कीम सर्व शिक्षा अभियान लैंग्वेज एंड मैक्स उन्नत भारत अभियान वॉट इज देर कनेक्ट हायर एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशन एंड सोसाइटी वाई वाई कनेक्ट हायर एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशन एंड सोसाइटी all right because they feel that today we have so many problems in the indian society that if they have to be solved they need innovative ideas innovative ideas will not come from 30 year olds 30 year old is struggling to meet the requirements of his wife children and his own aspiration once yes it's only the 20 the youth the the one full of energy who will talk about india needs to be developed india needs to be so and so where are they they are all in colleges so connect those higher educations to the society so that the pressing problems of the society go to the higher education institutions and a solution for them is developed all right this was the objective of unnat bharat abhiyan look into your notes in the purpose to connect institutions of higher education with local communities to address the development challenges through appropriate technologies for example if the farmers are having problem with cultivation of a particular crop in an area because the land is very rugged if they are connected to a nearby science institution uh, let's say agricultural institution agricultural university that particular students may take up real time problem come up with solution and also help them this will also enhance the knowledge of the student and also help the society in return this is project unnat abhiyan okay next we have rashtriya avishkar abhiyan why because generally feel indians have lesser interest in science and maths why do they say so because whenever you talk about nobel prize whenever you talk about discoveries they say why is it that most of the discoveries are coming from the west why not india then they say that maybe because we are not focusing much on science in our schools itself so that's why this initiative was launched rashtriya avishkar abhiyan in your notes look at the purpose inculcate a spirit of inquiry creativity and love for science and maths in school children all right our love for science and maths was as much as we got centem and took the second group engineering got some high scores and got a good engineering seat after that whether water is a good conductor of electricity whether it is not 
why do why does fan move why does temperature all that doesn't bother to us yes or no it was only up to scoring because that's how system so to create that interest we had rashtriya avishkar abhiyan so they want more discoveries and innovations to come up from the indian students moving ahead uchchatar avishkar abhiyan now what is avishkar i've already told you avishkar is discovery so rashtriya avishkar abhiyan is about interest in science in school children uchchatar means higher education so at least if you've not developed research interest in school if you are studying in iit you should develop some research and innovation interest all right so this scheme called uchchatar avishkar abhiyan was launched encourage iits to work with industry for innovation yes rashtriya uchchatar here in the purpose and all most of these schemes come under ministry of human resource development clear next we have imprint india look at the last scheme imprint india which says research in premier institutions into areas of social science social relevance these are the keywords in fact you will see in the purpose to address the major science and engineering challenges that india must address and champion to enable empower and embolden the nation for inclusive growth and self reliance rather i think what is here is more relevant research in premier institutions into areas of social relevance so they want all the premier institutions to take care of let's say poverty how do you address poverty are there innovative methods how do you ed address educational gap today even if most of the children in india have got into schools up to 8th standard if you take them out and ask them to do a basic addition or subtraction they're not able to do learning outcome is still poor so they want the premier institutions to come up with innovative solutions let's say with the help of some uh, you can set up some lab you can set up some new technology of how you can teach maths to children all this can come only from premier institutions all right so that is imprint india these are the some of the recent initiatives we'll summarize them once and then move to further recent initiatives bade bharat bade bharat focuses on science and language they are a part of sarv shiksha abhiyan okay rashtriya avishkar abhiyan focuses on science at school level okay uchchatar avishkar abhiyan focuses on science at the iit or the higher education level all right imprint india focuses on the higher education institutions getting into social relevance all right so they getting into uh, areas of social relevance and coming out with some solutions then we have unnat bharat abhiyan where we are trying to connect higher education institutions to especially people of rural areas remember unnat bharat abhiyan and imprint india are similar they are trying to connect the higher education societies with society come out with solution all right they are similar so just pay attention on the keywords if it's rural india then it will be unnat bharat abhiyan if it's going to be areas of social relevance then it will be imprint india yes can we move ahead okay few more initiatives gyan what is gyan global initiative of academic networks this is also in news this year what do you think it will be global initiative of academic networks link all india's higher education with institutions abroad why share share knowledge because we already know our teachers either do not have so much quality or they do not have so much number teacher training can take place but that's a slow term process so what you can do in fact get the best faculty of abroad to also teach your own students to technology that is done to global initiative of academic networks which is gyan all right look into your notes look at objective 
tapping the talent pool of scientists and entrepreneurs to engage with institutes of higher education to augment country's existing resources, accelerate pace of reform and further strengthen India's scientific and technological capability. So it is nothing but find out the best scientists and entrepreneurs in India and the world, connect them through your students through technology, all right? It could be either scientists and entrepreneurs from India or from the world, but use technology and connect them so that experience can be shared. So tapping the pool of scientists and entrepreneurs to engage with institutes of higher learning, that is the main objective of GIAN, Global Initiative for Academic Networks. So in fact, in the significance you will see, it will invite up to 1000 faculty every year among the best institutions in US and they will be sent to certain institutions in India. From there, those classes will be live cast or at least recorded and cast to all other institutions in India. So through technology, knowledge gets shared. Clear? Can we move ahead? Look at the next initiative called Saksham. Okay, Saksham is missing from the notes I guess. All right, or it should be there as we progress somewhere. Okay, what is Saksham? It's scholarship to differently pursue technical education. Okay, it should be at the end. It shouldn't be missing. So, now we are focusing on differently able to pursue technical education. That's called Saksham. Yes, Saksham scholarship to differently able to pursue technical education. Moving next is Diksha. Now, we have seen there is a special mission called National Mission on Teachers and Training to focus teacher quality. Today, how can you do with the help of digital infrastructure? So, we can have one best teacher addressing from one place to all the teachers on how to teach the class, how to improve your capability, how to build your skills. And through digital infrastructure, anything is possible. So, that comes under Diksha. National Digital Platform for Teachers Training, which will give them teaching courses, learning, professional development. Clear? That's called Project Diksha. Digital Infrastructure for Sharing Innovations in Area of Teacher Training. Here. Then we have Jigyasa. Jigyasa in Hindi means curiosity. Okay? Jigyasa in Hindi means curiosity. This says, inspire students to take up interest in science. How? Through connecting or direct meeting with scientists itself. All right? So we have Student Scientist Connect program. So let's say if Abdul Kalam can come and meet a few of, okay, he isn't there, but if Abdul Kalam was to meet a few of the students in some schools or colleges, he might have motivated a lot of students that way. So that Student Scientist Connect program comes under Jigyasa. Swayam, again in news, to achieve a online platform for courses of higher education. Okay? Online platform for almost all the courses of higher education. Why? For access, equity and quality. Look at the, uh, in your notes, look at purpose. To achieve the three cardinal principles of education policy, that is access, equity and quality. So that the best teaching and best learning somewhere in the country can be taken everywhere throughout. Yes, after we have seen Pade Bharat, Bade Bharat, just try to recollect, we will recollect because we have seen so many schemes now. Pade Bharat, Bade Bharat, language and max. Uh, Rashtriya Avishkar Abhyan, Science. Uchitar Avishkar Abhyan, Science in Higher Education. Then we had Unnat Bharat Abhyan, Higher Education with Rural Areas. Imprint India, Higher Education into Areas of Social Relevance. Now we had Jian, Higher Education with Institutes of Global Excellence Worldwide, yes. Then we had Saksham, 
for differently able. Then we had Swayam for online courses for all higher education. Then we had Diksha, an online platform for teacher training and sharing resources. Then we have Jigyasa, Student Scientist Connect program. UPSC's last four years trend suggests that UPSC has been asking questions more from this. What is Project Swayam about? What is Project Saksham about? All right? They are not now interested because they know that every uh, institute in India would have taught you about Sarva Siksha Abhiyan, Madhyamik Siksha Abhiyan, Uchitar Siksha Abhiyan. But this keeps updated every, uh, every day until you go for the prelims. Okay? And this content, mostly even in Hindu, you might not find. It's only there in the PIB. So government launches a scheme, PIB will immediately report. So pay attention because even this is covering only till I think two days back. The last I checked PIB was probably on Sunday. All right. So after this, you will have to keep checking for recent initiatives. Is that clear? I will move ahead now. So education comes to an end here. All right. Education sector, overall picture with recent initiatives are done. What do you think is the next focus, next story? Urban development, exactly. Now we will look at urban development. Now, even before we start and directly look at the schemes, we will try to understand why is urban development very important and what are the areas which the government might have focused on? Before 2000, there was no single scheme of the government focusing on urban development. Okay, no single scheme. Why? Because India always believed, as Gandhi believed, that India lives within villages. So every scheme was focusing only on rural development. Suddenly in 2000, we had studies showing that growth is coming from the cities. And we also had a study which said that by 2040 or 50, I think, almost 60% of your GDP, your population would have settled in the cities. So there will be like very small clusters of development in the cities surrounded by major rural areas. And they started witnessing that. That is the time when the government thought, okay, now we need a scheme to focus on urban development. Why? Because there were new challenges in urban development. When too many people started migrating to cities for development, what happened? Constraint on resources. Chennai was only up to, I think, earlier, the old Chennai was the city, uh, the area around Central or Paris. Even, I think, some 10 years before, Ananagar was not like this. Today, if you look at that, I think 4th Avenue or 6th Avenue, 4th uh, Avenue, I guess, entire thing is like a new shopping area. This was not how Ananagar was 10 years back. Some, a little more back, Ananagar was basically a lake. Okay, it was a wetland. And slowly, IS institutes, no, slowly development started happening. IS institutes came later, all right? Yes, IS institutes came only some 10, 15 years before. Now, what has happened to development basically? Development is spilling over. Okay, it's called urban sprawl. Now, somebody, if they've got a police headquarters or if the administration headquarters are near central, he has to not just think about that area, he has to think about 30, 35 kilometers up to Semenjeri area where the IT corridor has built up. All right? So, right from law, right from water, right from transport, right from uh, waste disposal, everything has become a challenge for the administration. That is why urban development started receiving focus and the first scheme in fact was uh, Jawaharlal Nehru National Urban Renewal Mission. All right? So that was, this is the story of urban development. Today, where do you think government needs to focus on? If we are talking about urban development, what are the major things that you can think of? Slum should be rehabilitated, okay. So there should be some scheme for the slum rehabilitation taken, okay. Public transport, maybe there should be some scheme for the public transport. That's where we have green urban transport scheme, which we have done. Waste management, okay. So there should be some scheme for waste management, all right. 
then proper drainage okay then government has clubbed all of these in one and they said if so much population starts living in the cities i need i cannot come out with normal solutions i need to come out with extraordinary solutions that's why government came up with an extraordinary scheme called smart cities concept all right with the existing knowledge existing infrastructure you can't solve all these problems you need information communication technology to solve these problems of the urban cities all right so the first scheme we will see is smart cities then then what else can you think of when it comes to cities some scheme if you read housing. housing okay where for whom is housing a problem in urban areas bpl okay so somebody said about slum rehabilitation what has happened in the cities because a lot of population has moved from the nearby rural areas in search of job but still they are not able to afford a living in the cities so they end up settling as slums so slums have been proliferating in the cities so then the government said if you want to improve the standard of the cities you need to give affordable housing for these slum people so which which scheme did we have what is the name of the scheme which will focus on rehabilitation of slum dwellers and affordable housing for urban poor see i'm just pay attention on the words because i am trying to club what you are telling but these are the key words of the scheme i am talking about the scheme which will focus on rehabilitation of slum dwellers and affordable housing of urban poor what is that pradhan mantri awas yojana urban okay it's called national urban livelihood mission is that clear okay what could be the next focus of the government urban development jobs okay is there a special focus on jobs in urban areas any scheme jobs are already coming because development is there yes what else think as an administrator what are the other challenges of urban development water all right okay so you um okay i think we'll go ahead because most of the schemes are related to overall development all right so we'll go ahead and look at the picture urban development major schemes we have pradhan mantri awas yojana urban this is for affordable housing for urban poor and slum rehabilitation it's also called national urban livelihood mission then we have for poverty alleviation sorry uh, no this is deen dayal okay uh, i'm sorry for the confusion pradhan mantri awas yojana is affordable housing then we have uh, national urban livelihood mission is nothing but deen dayal antyodaya yojana urban all right and this is sustainable livelihood opportunities for homeless poor and street vendors then to develop all pilgrimage sites in india we have prasad that is pilgrimage reservation and spirituality augmentation drive then to develop infrastructure which includes roadways waterways etc drainage we have atal mission for regeneration and urban transport amrit is nothing but revamp name of jawaharlal nehru national urban renewal mission all right i told you jn and urm in fact you would have seen the buses with jn and urm few years back that was the first scheme on urban infrastructure development a revamp name because we are now under bjp government so amrit is for infrastructure development then a scheme which licks sustainable development and information communication technology the smart cities mission finally for heritage development so we have a lot of heritage spread across the country if we can develop those heritage sites i think we can attract tourists from all over the world so we have heritage city development and augmentation yojana 
what we will do now is go into scheme one by one. I will focus on the keywords you may underline or note down. All right. So here we start with Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana. Urban. Okay. Uh, PMA Y is not there. Wait, let me just check. Okay, if it's not there, you will note down what I am telling. Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana. The keywords would be affordable housing for urban poor and rehabilitation of slum dwellers in urban areas. Okay, that's the keyword. Affordable housing for urban poor and slum rehabilitation in urban areas. Then we will look at Deen Deal uh, Antiyodhya Yojana, National Urban Livelihood Mission. Now what does this do? This basically takes care of poverty alleviation. In poverty alleviation, what does it do? Same thing. How can poverty get elevated? If you have a job. If, if you need a job, you basically need a skill. So somebody said jobs. For jobs, there should be a scheme. So they do not have a scheme to create jobs, but they have a scheme to create better skills so that the urban poor can fetch a job. All right. So look at this. Look into your notes. Objectives. I'm going to read only the keywords. Access gainful self-employment and skilled wage employment. Building strong grassroots level institutions of the poor. So either the poor are able to get a stronger self-employment or a better job. Okay, Gainful self-employment and skilled wage employment opportunities. How? Through building strong grassroots level institutions of the poor. So having institutions so that they can take up a better job through getting a better skill or they can have own self-employment opportunities. Okay. So this is nothing but a skill development mission for the urban poor so that they can move up the corridor. Last line, address livelihood concerns of urban poor street vendors to facilitate access. So urban poor includes street vendors, homeless poor, slum dwellers, etc. All these are the beneficiaries of the scheme. Can I move to the next scheme? This comes under Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Next we have Atal Mission for Regeneration and Urban Transformation to make cities livable and inclusive. And in the objective, you will see enhance the quality of urban life. This includes transport, infrastructure, drainage, waste disposal, etc. Yes, Atal Mission for Regeneration and Urban Transformation. They are just given one line saying make cities more livable and uh, sustainable. That includes development of infrastructure, that is public transport, it includes water, it includes drainage, it includes transport, it includes law, it includes waste disposal, etc. All of these. Alright, so these are the main objectives of Amrit Mission. Again, they come under a, uh, the same Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. See, somewhere they would have given Ministry of Urban Development, somewhere it's Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. It's the same thing, okay? Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Can we move to the next scheme? Prasad. Okay, uh, Prasad is after two schemes. So, Prasad is nothing but development under pilgrimage, uh, pilgrimage reservation and spirituality augmentation drive. What does that mean? Government uh, feels that there are few cities in India which attract a lot of tourism and they are pilgrim tourists. So the government wants to promote this pilgrimage tourism and that's why they want to even augment spiritual drive in India. All right. So let's say people coming to Indian cities for yoga camps, people coming to Indian cities for meditation, government wants to promote it. 
not just to promote our culture because that's a huge source of revenue because no other country can boast so much about spirituality as India. Yes, religions like Buddhism, Jainism, Hinduism, most of them have their origin or at least their spread, widespread in India. Clear? So, development of all pilgrimage, reservation and spirituality augmentation drive. So, if you look at the cities which are covered, you need not remember them. This is only for your understanding. Amravati, Dwarka, Amritsar, Ajmer, Kanchipuram, Velankani, Puri, Varnasi, Mathura, Kedarnath, Kamaya. So, government wants to promote all these tourism, uh, all pilgrimage and their significance to earn enough of foreign exchange. Okay? That is the main reason. It's not because they are a uh, RSS led government. That is other thing, but it, uh, that's how it generally looks like, but it gets a lot of money and foreign exchange for us. So, that's the main reason to promote them. Next, we have Amrit. Uh, we've already seen Amrit. We have to do, now look at Smart Cities mission. In Smart Cities, you will look at holistic and integrated urban development and you will include there role of information, communication, technology in city development. That is the only difference between Smart City mission and Amrit. Amrit also focuses on cities development, cities transformation, but smart cities focus on information communication technology getting deployed everywhere to solve all the urban development challenges. Clear? So you will write the role of ICT in city development which will lead, lead to a holistic and integrated development. Clear? Moving ahead we have Riday which is Heritage City Development and Augmentation Yojana. So, this might look like Prasad only. There they are trying to develop pilgrimage sites, here it's heritage sites. Let us just understand what is the key difference. In Prasad, they are trying to promote spirituality to get more people. Alright? In Ride, in Hriday, let us take for example, the city of Chennai. Now, uh, our central station is a symbol of the British infrastructure. It reminds us of the heritage that Chennai stands for. If you look at Ananagar, you anywhere feel British rule was somewhere, sometime before? No. Okay. If you've been to some, uh, if you've been to some uh, Rajasthan, cities of Rajasthan, okay, let us say, Jaipur or Udaipur or Jaisalmer, you will nowhere feel they were ruled by the British any time. You will only feel they might have been ruled by the, yeah, they were ruled by the Rajput. You might feel a tinge of Mughals, okay. In fact, if you talk to the people there, they will only talk about Mughals as enemies, but British was, British tinge is never seen there. Why? Because they never came, they were all uh, under subsidiary alliance, they had all come with the British, so British really did not interfere much there. Alright, so infrastructure does not show about British, clear? Whereas if you look at Mumbai, you will get the feel of British, alright? So now heritage development says, whenever you try to develop these cities, that heritage should not be lost, clear? So the city should still speak of its culture, city should still speak of its history, but your development should also take place. Clear? So, sustainable development of heritage with development would take place and that's Riday. That also focuses on few cities in India. So, if you look at the objective, that's the key thing there. Uh, revitalize the soul of the heritage city to reflect the city's unique character by encouraging aesthetically appealing accesses and informative and secured environment. So, there are 12 cities again, Amravati, Gaya, Dwarka, Badami, Puri, Amritsa, Ajmer, Kanchipuram, Velankani, Varangal, Varnasi and Mathura. There is an overlap in some of the cities. Some also come under Prasad and Amrit. Is this clear? So, the, the main difference is heritage development. They are telling that all these cities have to develop. But you have to ensure that the heritage is not lost. In Prasad, you are trying to promote pilgrimage and get more people to the city. Alright? Okay, moving ahead, we have rural development now. 
राइट प्रधानमंत्री यस वी हैव रूरल डेवलपमेंट नो इन रूरल डेवलपमेंट आल्सो दिस वुड बी द मेजर एरिया ऑफ फोकस वी लव हाउसिंग वी लव पॉवर्टी एलिवेशन वी माइट हैव रोड्स वी माइट हैव स्किल डेवलपमेंट ओके सो आई डायरेक्टली गो हेड so these are the three six seven wide areas of development first is housing we have the same pradhan mantri awas yojana which was there for urban now for rural but here look at the scheme the difference is it says purpose that's the main difference pakka house to every rural household by 2022 that's not what pradhan mantri awas yojana urban promises it just talks about urban people and slum dwellers but pradhan mantri awas yojana gramin or rural says we'll give house pakka house to every rural household by 2022 this comes under ministry of rural development next you have a scheme for employment for rural development what is the scheme narega what is narega say national rural employment program here the keywords are guaranteed wage employment to is it to one person per household or is it to every rural person national rural employment guarantee act guarantees 100 days of wage employment for one person for every household or is it for every eligible rural person sure open your notes i think two pages later you have this yes so what is the objective say every household all right so it's 100 days of guaranteed wage employment to every household where uh, whose adult members can volunteer to do unskilled manual work that's very important narega applies only to unskilled uh, work and not skilled labor all right to any unskilled labor one person per household gets guaranteed wage employment that's narega okay so in fact in the beneficiary also you will say it's unskilled manual laborers rural population and mostly seasonal employment because it's just 100 days moving ahead we will look at pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana which is for road development so we've already seen bharat mala pariyojana for developing all highways all highways are developed the next biggest challenge is how will all the agricultural produce come to the highways it's to the rural roads so the main problem in rural roads is we have rural roads connecting every nook and corner of the country but during some seasons the roads disappear okay if there's a flood roads disappear if there's a disaster roads are blocked all right because we do not have well built rural roads so that is the main focus of pradhan mantri sadak yojana all weather connectivity okay the main why is this a keyword because roads are there floods come disaster strikes roads disappear okay so all weather connectivity in your objective you will see and that is the keyword for the scheme all weather road connectivity in rural areas of the country to unconnected habitations so they say that the moment you connect them to roads throughout the year poverty will automatically reduce why if roads are developed something which is produced can be marketed if roads are developed i can walk or at least go till the ration shop to get my produce if roads are developed i can access better healthcare facility in case of emergency all right so that's a part of poverty alleviation strategy pradhan mantri sadak yojana all weather road connectivity to unconnected habitation clear next we have poverty alleviation just like urban development what was the scheme there din dayal upadhyay antyodaya yojana here also it's din dayal upadhyay antyodaya yojana day okay day 
but it's here called National Rural Livelihood Mission. This is the same scheme which was earlier called Ajivika under the previous government. Okay, so open that Ajivika to gain reduce poverty by enabling poor household to access. The words are the same: gainful self-employment and skilled wage employment. How? Through creating effective institutional platform and access to credit. Look at the last line in objective. Through get better access through financial services. So that way the household income increases. Focus is same. Whether it's Deen Dayal, Antyodhya Yojana, urban or rural. Either give them a skill for self-employment or give them a skill for better jobs. Clear? Next we have. Cooking gas. Did we discuss this? Some of them would be aware of this. Give cooking gas to every rural household. Why? Why should I give cooking gas to every rural household? To reduce the indoor pollution which is taking place in rural area because of burning uh, firewood and coal. What's the name of the scheme? Ujwala. Ujwala, Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana, free LPG connection to women of all BPL households only. Open your notes, there are few keywords here to focus on. In the purpose you will see free LPG connection to women of all BPL households. Alright, so this scheme is only for BPL families because others can afford and get a cooking gas. Also, which ministry launches this? Petroleum and natural gas. This is very important. And remember, this is the first welfare initiative of Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas ever since independence. They have never focused on a welfare initiative. This time they are focusing on a welfare initiative which is Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana. It will try to improve the health of women and children by providing LPG connection. Why? Less indoor pollution. Alright, that's why it's called a first welfare initiative of the ministry. Is this clear? Okay. Students at the last, are you able to follow? Yes? Okay. Although I can't see your faces, I can see at least heads nodding. So you may respond. Alright, next we have um, Overall holistic development of villages that is Sansad Adarsh Gram Yojana. It's called a Sanji. Each, uh, now what is this scheme take care of? We would have heard of this few years back, not now. Uh, every MP was to adopt few villages, make them model villages and then every other village sees these model villages and says, look, he's doing great, let's also do great. All right, so that is model village development. Now, what are the keywords coming back? Integrated development of select village across multiple areas. And the goal, you will look at the significance. Goal is to develop Adarsh grams by March 2018, of which at least one should be achieved by 2016. So each MP here, each MP to develop model villages so that other villages might follow. So this is a scheme for holistic development of villages. Clear? Okay. Finally, we have a scheme which says the urban development is done, rural development is done. If development is only happening in rural areas, why would you motivate people to go to urban areas? Rather not. So that population stress in the rural urban area false. Yes, if people, if we can stop people from moving from rural area to urban area, we will be able to reduce the stress of population in the urban areas. So how do we do that? Make urban and rural areas almost similar. So to bridge the national, uh, bridge the rural urban divide, a scheme was launched called the urban mission. What is the whole name of the scheme? Shyam Prasad Mukherjee Rural Urban Mission. It's called Shyam Urban Mission. 
Shyam Prasad Mukherjee Urban Mission SPMRM. In your notes, it's there. After Narega, you will find it. In significance, I think the whole name is written. Shyam Prasad Mukherjee Urban Mission. When Abdul Kalam was there, it was called Pura, provision of urban amenities in rural areas, and that was the scheme for which uh, Israel sir was uh, doing a pilot project. All right. So summing up the schemes for uh, rural development, I think quickly closing this off so that you are able to recollect from your own memory. First we will look at housing. What is the name of the scheme for housing? Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Grameen. Okay. What will it try to do? It guarantees a pakka house to every rural household by 2022. All right. For poverty elevation, what scheme do we have? National? Mm. Okay, if this is there, you will, uh, now, yes. Much easier now. Yeah. For poverty elevation, what do you have? Yojana. Rural again, okay. So that will try to focus on skills for either self-employment or for um, uh, for job, okay. For roads, what scheme do we have? <laughs> Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana, which will ensure uh, all weather road connectivity to all unconnected habitations in the country. Perfect, okay. Now what scheme do we have for holistic development of the villages? Sansad Adash Gram Yojana, which is called Sanji, where, uh, see it says Sansad, right? Sansad means parliament, okay? Uh, so every MP takes up few villages, develops them into modern villages, model villages, okay? Then what scheme do we have to bridge the rural-urban divide? Shyam Prasad Mukherjee, National Rural Urban Mission. All right, there we will try to ensure that we have enough facilities in rural areas so that people don't migrate to the urban areas. Any other schemes pending? Ujwala. Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana, first welfare initiative of Ministry of Natural, uh, Petroleum and Natural Gas. It will try to focus on free LPG connection to all BPL women. Okay, beneficiary here is a BPL women. Why? So that uh, they are safe from indoor pollution. Okay? Quickly moving. Can we move to the next story? So this is mother and child. So the moment a child is born or the moment I think a woman conceives till the child is born and grows up to six years of age, we have continuous schemes from the government. We'll go ahead and look at them. Okay. So this is how I think it's easy to remember. Before delivery, what happens? During delivery, what are the schemes? After delivery, what are the schemes? So now, before delivery, uh, all that the woman requires is she requires one checkup every month with the doctor and few scans. So uh, that's called antenatal care. All right. So for antenatal care, the government has launched a scheme called Pradhan Mantri. Surakshit Matritva Abhyan. Okay, that's the first scheme in your notes as well. Pradhan Mantri Surakshit Matritva Abhyan. It takes care of antenatal care services of pregnant women. So you have a free and free antenatal checkup on the 9th of every month. Is it for rural or urban women? Rural, urban, APL, BPL, all pregnant women can come there for checkup. All right? Okay. Next. Now, during delivery. The problem with most of the pregnancy cases in rural area is that women do not want to go to hospitals for delivery. Because even today they have, uh, earlier delivery was always done at home. It was only now that people have lost that knowledge, so delivery is done in hospitals. So in urban areas, uh, urban areas we've all already got used to it, but in rural areas still delivery is taking place at homes. To encourage institutional delivery, a scheme was launched and that is 
Janani Suraksha Yojana. Look at the scheme here. Janani Suraksha Yojana, cash assistance for institutional delivery. Rural area, think of it, no? Very easy to remember. Rural area, how can you motivate people to do something? Give cash. So they say, come to the hospital, deliver the child, take the money and go. Cash assistance for institutional delivery, Janani Suraksha Yojana. All right? Now the women starts thinking that if I go to the hospital, if I deliver, I will get cash assistance. But I have to pay all other expenses, like cesarean if it happens, you have to pay for, you have to pay for the operation. And after that, if I'm admitted, I'll have to pay. If my child has disease, nowadays we come across diseases like the newborn child has got jaundice, then they're up, they're admitted in ICU. For all that, I'll have to start paying. That becomes a concern for the women. So now what do they say? We'll try to reduce that also. So to eliminate all out-of-pocket expenses during delivery, we have Janani Sur Shishu Suraksha Karyakram. Okay? Then, then the next, next concern for the women is, during pregnancy, I've already had so much wage loss. Government is telling, don't worry, I'll compensate for that also. So partial wage loss, uh, partial compensation for wage loss, during the first delivery, that is Pradhan Mantri Matru Vandana Yojana. Clear? This wage loss is not for every delivery. Alright? It is only for the first delivery. Because then people will be motivated to already increase the population. We already have a very huge population. It's only for the first delivery. It's because it's believed that fearing wage loss, a lot of women do not take off from work and that affects the health of the mother and the child. Clear? We will quickly look at the notes to find out some important keywords. Look at Janani Suraksha Yojana. Your keywords would be cash assistance for institutional delivery. And underline the term <coughs> neonatal mortality in objective. So, in the scheme, we have written cash assistance for institutional delivery. Underline the words maternal and neonatal mortality in the objective. So, this scheme is not for uh, every place. This, this scheme is only for below poverty line households. Alright, because only they can be encouraged to have institutional delivery by giving cash. Above poverty line will automatically go to the hospitals. Okay, so in the beneficiary, you will underline that. Come to Janani Sishu Suraksha Karyakram. There you will underline maternal and infant mortality. I will explain these terms, just underline, and we will see the significance. When we saw Janani Suraksha Yojana here, I told you to underline neonatal mortality. When you, und uh, when you look at Janani Sishu Suraksha Karyakram, you will underline infant mortality. Then, then uh, you have this uh, partial compensation wage loss. Okay. This is just here. So you may just note down in your notes as well. Pradhan Vandana Yojana is partial compensation for wage loss during first delivery. Okay. This also will take care of neonatal and infant mortality. Okay. Now what are these? If a child dies during the birth, Okay, so neonatal mortality is nothing but the death of the child within 28 days of the delivery. It's called neonatal mortality. If you have to stop that death, you just have to promote institutional delivery. Alright, that is why in, geo, uh, in uh, Janani Suraksha Yojana, I asked you to underline neonatal mortality. Okay, so within 28 days, if you have to stop the death of the child, Promote an institutional delivery, mother will be safe, child will be safe. But after that, if you want to ensure that till one year children do not die, then you will have to ensure Janani Shishu Suraksha Karyakram, that is, you will, so you will have to encourage those people to keep the child in ICU or take necessary treatment if the child is being weak. Clear? That's why there you will not talk about neonatal, but you will talk about Infant mortality rate. Are you able to follow why both the schemes are different? If you have to stop the death of the child within 28 days, then you have to promote institutional delivery. Janani Suraksha Yojana. 
if you have to ensure the child, a weaker child born is safe for the next one year or even beyond that, you have to ensure that they get all immediate treatment after the delivery. For which the only concern that poor people have is no money. So reduce out of pocket expenditure. There you have Janani Sishu Suraksha Karikram. Then this wage loss will take care of both neonatal and infant mortality because uh, generally women tend to work until the last moment and even immediately few months immediately after the delivery because they do not want to yeah, source of livelihood. So that's why partial wage loss is compensated through Pradhan Mantri Matritva Vandana Yojana. Is this clear? So during delivery is over. Now after delivery what happens? After delivery, the main concern for the child, now focus is on the child, not on the mother, okay? So forget the mother now. Child is born. The main concern for the child is malnutrition. If the mother has not eaten enough during delivery, child is malnourished. If the mother was underweight, child would, or high likeliness, child is underweight. The moment a child is underweight, lifelong he will develop diseases, all right? So what do you do? The first thing is promote breastfeeding practices and that is mother's absolute affection. Alright, it's called mass scheme of the government. In your notes, you will look at the purpose and that will be your main focus. Promotion of breastfeeding and provision of counselling services for promoting breastfeeding through health practices. Is this clear? Next. Now, child is growing. High likeliness that it will develop diseases. So what do you do? Immunize, vaccine them. All right. So we have the universal immunization program. Yes. So in your notes, vaccination of free of cost against 10 preventable diseases. Just, just edit this. It is against 13 diseases now. Okay. Make the change. Universal immunization program is not against 10, it has been updated now. It's against 13 vaccine preventable diseases. Okay? So you have diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, polio, measles, uh, uh, tuberculosis, hepatitis B, meningitis. Then you have uh, hemophilus. Japanese encephalitis is not there, remove that. You have rotavirus. Okay, then you have measles, rubella, MR vaccine, you have IPV, injected polio vaccine. See, I'll tell you what to do from the notes, from the notes, diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, polio, measles, tuberculosis, hepatitis B, mening, uh, meningitis and pneumonia. So, these 7, 8 diseases are all there. Okay, after that, Japanese encephalitis is not under universal immunization program. It's only in selected district. So you will cut that and you will write measles rubella vaccine. MR vaccine was launched under uh, UIP in the recent times. Rotavirus has been launched. Rotavirus is to fight diarrhea. So that's why they've given rotavirus diarrhea. Then you have IPV that is injected polio vaccine. So earlier we only had oral polio vaccine. Now we also have IPV under uh, universal immunization program. And apart from that, there's one more vaccine. Uh, I think I will update it in the ERP once I go, which is launched very recently, okay, in the last few months. So, yes? I'm not able to recollect the exact name. That's why I'm telling there's one. And that's why now we have 13 vaccines under universal immunization program. Is that clear? I will update this in your ERP once the class is over. Right now we have 13 vaccines under UIP. Now UIP is not very important for us because we have even now. Before that we have to see mission Indradhanush. What is the difference between universal immunization program and mission Indradhanush? Universal immunization program said whatever possible Wherever you can prevent a disease because of vaccine for the child, try to prevent them. And this has been running since uh, last two, three decades. When Mission Indrasanush was launched by this government, they said coverage is not increasing. Still only 60% or 40% of the child are immunized. They wanted to launch a mission mode and said, try to cover everything. 
So that is why just increasing the coverage of immunization was the main objective of Mission Indradhanus. Both are nothing but protection of children against vaccine prevent diseases. It is just increasing the coverage, clear? So in Mission Indradhanus, you will uh, underline full immunization with all vaccines for 2 years in pregnant women. It is basically to just accelerate the process of immunization, nothing else. UIP is there just to accelerate UIP, Mission Indranush was launched. That is it. What is even? That is in news right now. Even is in news this year, current affairs, so pay attention. Even is nothing but vaccines are there, we are trying to increase coverage, we are trying to use all information communication technology to speed up this process. Clear? So, electronic vaccine intelligence network to support government of India's UIP program by providing real time information on vaccine stock and flows, ok. That is the main concern. So, at the point of time, do we have so much of vaccines to address the newborn population which is being added every year or every moment. So, that real time information using technology comes under EWIN project. Even is in news this year. Clear? UIP mission in the Danush, even. Moving to the next one. Now, child are given vaccine, then they still need care. So, we finally have Rashtriya Bal Swasth Karyakram, which is about early identification and child intervention for 4 Ds. So, that children do not suffer from any birth defect. So, there should not be a defect at birth, deficiency, disease or development delay including disability. Clear? So, early child care intervention to reduce disability, death, deficiency and uh, diseases is called Rashtriya Bal Swasthya Karakyam. The main focus here is, so what mortality will it reduce? Okay, there is one more mortality called under 5 mortality, okay. So, to bring down under 5 mortality, this scheme was launched. The scheme is not for neonatal mortality, the scheme is not for infant mortality. The scheme was launched for under 5 mortality, to bring down the under 5 mortality. These are the 3 different mortality rates which have been defined by the government and also at the, when they talk about sustainable development goals, this is how they define, clear? So, this scheme is to bring down under 5 mortality rate in India, clear? So, this is for children of 6, 0 to 6 years in both rural areas and urban fund. Can I move ahead? Alright. You have another class at 1 o'clock, correct? Okay. We will summarize quickly now. For minority affairs, we have 3 schemes for 3 different sections of population. For women empowerment, it is called Nai Roshni. It is called Nai Manzil. For craftsmen, it is called Ustad. Okay? So, for women, it is called Nai Roshni. In your notes, look at the objectives to empower and instill confidence in women, especially to promote entrepreneurship. Okay? Especially to promote entrepreneurship. That is Nai Manzil, uh, Nai Roshni. Nai Manzil is for youth development. So, why is that? Look at objective, better employment in organized sector, that is very important. Better employment in organized sector, why? Because it is found that most of the minority youth have studied in non-formal institutions like madrasas or others. So, they have a difficulty in getting a job in the organized sector. To bridge that gap, Nai Manzil was launched, clear? So, better jobs in the organized sector and in the beneficiary you will see why because they are either school dropouts or they have studied in institutions like madrasas. Next we have Ustad. So, in every minority community there are few people who have a very uh, niche skill to develop a particular art or craft. So, to encourage them to uh, save that art and craft and to be able to make a business out of it, project Ustad was launched, alright? So, in your objectives you will see 
upgrading skills and training of minority by preservation of their traditional ancestral craft. So they are not just able to preserve their craft, but they are also able to make a livelihood out of it. Is this clear? I will move to the next one, labor reforms. All the labor reforms which are discussed here come under the main scheme called Dindya Lupadya Shramet Jayate Karyakram. This is the major umbrella scheme in labor reforms called Dindya Lupadya Shramet Jayate Karyakram. What are the components of it? These are not different schemes, these are just components of the main scheme. All right, what do they say? Uh, in India, if you see too many labor laws and compliance is not very easy. So, uh, that compliance will be made easy by labor laws itself becoming easier called Shram, through Shram Suvida portal. In fact, look at your notes, it's one stop shop for labor law compliance. So, an employer can just go to Shram Suvida portal, file an application online saying I have, up, I have complied with all these labor law and that is more than enough. Okay? The next issue with labor laws was. Uh, we had labor inspectors coming to industries and they'll ask you for bribe that you've not, you've not uh, complied with this law, you've not complied with this law and then they'll say only if you give so much of bribe, I'll give you all the certificates. And this checking was happening very random. Like you know, whomever they wanted to target, that's where they had a labor inspection. So the government said no need. Now online it will randomly generate an office number, you will go there, do the labor inspection and come back, that's it. Okay, so you can't target somebody. So that's called, uh, it's called labor inspection scheme. There's transparency in the inspection. And then you have portability of social secure benefit of laborers. So if somebody is, let's say, working in a part of Tamil Nadu, he gets, he gets, uh, he moves to a place in Uttar Pradesh for further employment. All the benefits of Employee Provident Fund will be carried forward to his future account, clear? So every employee will just have one universal account number so that he can carry forward all the social security benefits. And finally, promotion of apprenticeship. How? Through National Apprenticeship Promotion Scheme. So these are the major components of the main scheme called Deen Dhyal Upadhyay Shramer Jayate Karyakram. Clear? Moving ahead. Okay, now I think we have the power sector and I think this should be the last with some new schemes added in your notes. So get back to your notes now, I will quickly tell you the scheme and the focus. We have the Pahel scheme, what is Pahel scheme? Giving up of LPG subsidy, was that Pahel? Exactly, direct benefit transfer scheme of LPG. So all your LPG subsidy will be directly uh, coming to your bank account. So what will you write there? Direct benefit transfer of LPG. LPG subsidy is the power. I can take another 10 minutes of yours. Yes, we will finish all the government schemes. Okay. I think here you should be more worried because you are taking up prelims in two months now. All right, so Pahel is nothing but the direct benefit transfer of LPG subsidy. Go to the next program in your notes, which is SAT, Sustainable Action Plan for Transforming Human Resource. This is very important because it's launched this year, again in current affairs, please note. Who launched this? Niti Aayog. Why to bring about a transformation in which sectors? Health and education. So in the objective, you would see bring transformation health and education sector and they've identified three states for health and education. So that has also been given in your notes, all right? Now, come to the notes here, uh, come to the slide here. We are looking at the power sector reforms, okay? There are this, again, this classification is only for our understanding and our summarization. Coming to the first thing, Power generation. Power generation means what do you need? Coal. Okay, in India, even today, 60 or 67 percent of our energy basket is of thermal power plants. For thermal power plants, you need coal. And we know all our coal blocks have been having a problem. 
either with mining or with the government or with land acquisition or with the people there. So we needed to sort that out. So government this year, uh, I mean this government, not this year we would say, government launched a new scheme called Shakti. Okay, Shakti is nothing but, is it one second? Yes, scheme for harnessing and allocating koila. It's there in your notes, maybe just two pages later. Scheme for harnessing and allocating koila transparently in India. So why was this launch? For transparent allocation of coal and established key linkages. From there you will go to the notes in the significance. What is the significance of the scheme? A win-win situation for independent power producers who have had a long-term secure supply security of coal from a source of their choice while consumers will benefit from a lower tariff. Yes, significance of this is very very important. So once Shakti is in place, all the independent producers will have a guaranteed access to coal. So if coal production is being continuous, consumers will also have constant tariff. So the power tariff for the coal will come down. So this is in relation to generation. When it comes to distribution, there is a scheme called Uday. Okay? What is Uday? Ujwal Dishcom Assurance Yojana. What does this mean? All the power distribution companies so were in huge losses and that's why they were having a tough time. So the government decided to take over all the debts and they said, listen, here onwards you will follow strict financial discipline. Clear? So to ensure financial discipline of the power discoms, Ujwal Discom Assurance Yojana Uday was launched. Is this clear? After that, now once power is generated, we need to ensure that the power goes to every household or every place. Generally in urban areas, we do not have a problem with power supply. It was only in the rural areas. So there are two schemes for rural electrification. Saubhagya and Deendhya Lupadhyay Gram Jyoti Yojana. Alright? Here, take out the scheme. Saubhagya scheme. Saubhagya says nothing but there should be ensured free electricity connections to all households in rural villages and urban villages. It includes everybody. How is it different from earlier scheme? All earlier schemes of the government said every village should be electrified. Every urban area should be electrified. What happened? One street was electrified, they said village is electrified. Okay? This government said every household should be electrified. And that is, the ben uh, that is nothing but uh, Saubhagya scheme. It is also called Pradhan Mantri Sahaj Bijli Har Ghar Yojana. Clear? Students at the last still following? Yes, little more time, we will be able to do this. is the last slide. Next, we have Deendhya Lupadhyay Gram Jyoti Yojana. This is an other rural electrification scheme. The main question is, what is the difference? Okay? Now, what did they notice? In rural areas, there was no feeder separation between agriculture and non-agriculture purpose. So, whenever the country faced power deficit, the entire power was cut from the rural area. Now what happened, at least household, if there is no power, there is no economic damage. But if the agricultural areas do not have power supply, there is huge economic consequence of it. The entire agriculture and the economy gets affected. So they decided, see, to come to a situation of power surplus, it will take us some time. But immediately what is possible is we can separate feeders of agriculture and non-agriculture purpose. And this was the main focus of Deen Diyal Upadhyay Grameen Jyoti Yojana. Is this clear? Both Saubhagya and both uh, Gram, Deen Diyal Upadhyay Gram Jyoti Yojana have to do with rural electrification only. One has to do with universal electrification to every household. The other has to do with feeder separation between agricultural and non-agricultural area. Is this clear? So in your notes you will quickly underline 
for deen dayal upadhyay gram jyoti yojana your objectives are very important separation of agricultural and non agricultural feeders facilitating judicious supply to the rural areas strengthening the transmission and distribution network and rural electrification all right both have to do with rural electrification saubhagya is every household gets electricity this is judicious supply of electricity in the rural areas are you all able to follow okay and uh, next we have uh, the ujala scheme for efficiency so once you have power power is supplied but we have to ensure that we don't waste electricity so what does the government do they launch led they said ujala scheme which is unnat jyoti affordable lightings for all they said try to use led lights instead of cfl lights clear so your next scheme there talks about ujala okay ujala also seems missing okay so we'll quickly write affordable just note this here ujala unnat jyoti affordable lighting for all save energy through distribution of leds to domestic household clear this scheme applies only for domestic households and not for industrial households so it says at subsidized rates you can take leds and have energy efficiency finally for sustainable development when it comes to power it involves mining when it involves mining it's mostly the tribal areas and in with involves the tribal areas they are not very happy because they do not get the benefits of this development so the government launch pradhan mantri khanij kshetra yojana oh one second okay it is there ujala is also there it's there in the beginning it's just uh, the arrangement is changed if you come ujala is also there and you have pradhan mantri khanij kshetra kalpyan yojana there you will underline welfare of area of people and people affected by mining related operations okay so where do you generate the funds from using district mineral foundation so it says whenever a mining project is allocated some amount will go to district mineral foundation and that money will go for education health etc of the mining area clear this takes care of the entire power sector ujala are there in your notes and pradhan mantri khanish kshetra kalyan yojana is also there in the notes clear with this power sector comes to an end now what i will do is last one month alone there are some five six very new schemes which are launched they have been added at the end of the notes why because the notes were prepared in february and then we had to add all right no other reason so i'll finish them off and you will have to add them up with march april march is done last week of march april okay quickly reading through and i'm telling you the main points you may just quickly underline gobardhan yojana very important this is related to rural development what about rural development to ensure that free okay so read through the objective to make villages open defecation free and improve the life of villages so how will you make them open defecation free manage and convert all cattle dungs and solid waste in farms to compost biogas and bio cng all right that is gobardhan which is galvanizing organic bio agro resources next we have portion pradhan mantri's overarching scheme for holistic nourishment you've heard of national nutrition mission yes so government is trying to uh, reduce or rather eliminate all form of malnutrition from india a question was already asked last year this year to the same mission pm modi is famous for giving names okay names and tag lines he has said i think on march 8 he was talking and he said now we will call it as portion mission okay so underline portion mission and look at the purpose reduce stunting undernutrition anemia and low birth weight it will address malnutrition then we have kusum scheme of the government for harnessing solar power in rural india 
you will look at the significance that will be more than sufficient. Solar water pumps will be installed in remote areas for irrigation uh, needs of farmers and farmers can get even extra income by selling the surplus power. So this is to get solar power into the irrigation sector. Then we have project Unati. Project Unati comes under Sagar Mala. All right, it is again for port-led development. So what will they do? They will just, uh, now they've already known how all the major ports of country are performing. They'll benchmark them against the best ports and they will be ranked, all right? So what are the keywords? Benchmark operational and financial performance of the 12 major ports with selected Indian private ports and best international ports, all right? So you have to ensure that the Indian ports develop as good as the best private and international ports. So this is for port-led efficient development, Project Unati. Then you have Swadhar Gray, Relief and Rehabilitation to Dispute Women and Women in Distress. Then we have Rashtriya Arogya Nudi, Financial Assistance to Patients Living Below Poverty Line to receive any uh, treatment if they want from life-threatening diseases. Yes, last few schemes I've rushed up. I would suggest you to go through the notes. I've given you the key, key areas where you need to focus, okay? I'll just summarize the last scheme because I won't be satisfied. So, portion is about Pradhan Mantri's initiative to reduce all forms of malnutrition. It is under the National Nutrition Mission. Then we saw Gobardhan scheme, which is to make all villages defecation free and and ensure that all bio, uh, uh, the cow dung gets converted into bio waste. Then we saw Swadhar Gray scheme. What is it for? Swadhar Gray scheme is for destitute. Yeah, it's relief and rehabilitation for women in distress. Project Unati. Why is Project Unati launched? To ensure that there is efficiency in the Indian ports. Okay? And finally, we saw um, Rashtri Arogya Nidhi for financial assistance to patients who are below poverty line and also suffering from major life-threatening diseases. At the end of the notes, this is just to, um, for your practice, see what I want you to do with these is, one, to give you an assurance that what we said nine questions are coming for last two, three years. This is just to supplement that fact. Number two, Please go through these questions and understand if at all a government scheme is asked, what is UPSC testing? Have I done all of that for the schemes that I have prepared? Clear? So you may even take this as a practice. In fact, you will be able to solve most of the questions because we have seen an overall picture. Okay? Apart from that, for your prelims, please focus on PIB, recent initiatives. We have done till March third week. So you will just have to update yourself with March last week, April, May also. Yes, do not live. So that should suffice for the government scheme. Any doubts? No? All right. So we'll stop the class here today. And if you have any feedback, get back to me at the end of the class. All right.